Hello and welcome back to the Laravel course. In this video we're going to be looking at routing, templates and controllers. Since all three of these things kind of link in together, I've pretty much got to teach all three of them at once. So in the last video we talked a little bit about routing and as you may know, in the web.php file we've got the, all of our routes and this is the default route that's created. So this sends us to the welcome page and this welcome page is stored in the resources, views, welcome.blade.php and that is the page right there that gets displayed. So if we go ahead and start up the Laravel web server, mine is already started, and I go to the home page, you'll see that this is the welcome view. And by default, when you go to the root directory, you get the welcome view, which just says Laravel and has a few links. And this is the welcome.blade.php file. And you'll find that in the roots file. So when they go to the root directory, we send them this view being the welcome view. So let's go ahead and create our own root. So we're gonna go root, and this is going to be for get requests. So you could put here like post if you wanted to handle a post request, uh, but we're just going to be handling a get request. And the first parameter is like the folder path, I guess you could say. It's not actually a folder path. This is like a virtual folder path, um, but it's pretty much where in the file directory. So if we had www.codersguide.com forward slash, it's whatever's after that forward slash. So I'm going to say uh, forward slash hello and then the next parameter is what we're actually going to do when someone hits that uh, request and then the second parameter is what we're actually going to do when someone requests that url so in this case we're going to do a function and inside of here is literally just what's going to happen when someone hits it so we're going to go return and we'll just return some text so we'll just return hello and then when we go up here and we go slash hello you can see we get hello and that's pretty much it. That's the, the simplest form of a root. Now, what about if we want to return a view? So again, just like up here, we just go view, and then in brackets, we would just put the name of the template of the blade template. So we just go welcome, and it does exactly the same as what we've got up here. Nothing too complicated. Now, ideally, you wouldn't really put too much inside of your roots file. You want to keep this as clean as possible. And this is where controllers come in. So I wanna go ahead and get rid of this function in here. And for now, we'll just leave it blank. So remember how I said before that a controller is what handles all the logic. So it's gonna handle that request. So the roots file is gonna send you to the controller. The controller will handle this request and then it will send out the view. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a controller. So go back into the terminal and just close out your server, control and C on a Mac. I think it's the same on Windows as well. And we're gonna go PHP artisan make colon controller and then we've got to give it a name and if you go into the controllers directory uh, and go into auth you'll see this sort of naming pattern for controllers it tends to be uppercase first letter lowercase the rest and then we put the word controller at the end so i'm going to make a controller and i'm going to call this greeting controller and this won't make too much sense, but this is the example I'm going to use. And that is errored, and the reason being is because you can't have any errors in your roots file for that to run. So let's go ahead and do that again. And you see controller created successfully. And then back in PHP Storm, you'll see this greeting controller has popped up. And they've put some basic code in here just to get you started. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a public function in here. So public function, and then we're going to call it underscore underscore invoke. And it's named invoke with two underscores for a reason. So Laravel will go ahead and look for this underscore underscore invoke function. And that is where it will handle the controller. So if we go back into our web.php file, we can uncomment this. And we're going to tell it which controller to run. So every time someone hits slash hello, we're going to hit this particular controller. And in this case, the controller is called greeting controller. And you must put this in quotes, by the way. So go back into the greeting controller file and just to test that this works, we're gonna return some text. So just return hello. And we need to also start up the Laravel server again. So php artisan serve and the server's back up. Slash hello gives us hello. And that is coming from here from within the controller. The controller's handling all the logic. In this case, it's just gonna return out hello. We could also here return a view, just like in the root. So let's go return view welcome and refresh and you see we get the welcome page. We could also create other functions within this controller. So I'm gonna create another function called goodbye. And this is literally just gonna go return goodbye. And then I'm gonna rename this to hello. And then we'll return hello. And then going back into our web.php file, 
We're now going to rename this controller. So it's currently called greeting controller on its own, but now we need to reference that function within it. So we're going to go at, and then the function name. So in this case, hello. And then what this will do obviously is look for the greeting controller and then look for the function hello inside of it, which is right here. So ideally we should be getting hello back. And then what we can do in our web file is we can go and duplicate this and we can say, uh, run the goodbye function when someone hits slash goodbye. And we can go and test that goodbye. And you see they get goodbye. In the real world, you'd probably have a lot more code inside of this controller. So you might have some uh, database lookups or you might be working with your model or doing some encryption or just anything inside of this controller. So by separating it out into controllers, we can keep this web file, this roots file, very clean. We just tell it the request and then how to handle it using a controller. And then we worry about the actual logic inside of the individual controllers. Now, what about if we wanna pass a variable onto the controller? So let's say we wanna go get hello, forward slash hello, forward slash, and then the person's name. So let's say the person's name is Neil. That's my name in case you didn't know. Um, so we wanna handle that, that whatever's in that second folder, it's a virtual folder, but let's call it a folder. Whatever's in this part here after the second slash, that is what we wanna greet them as. So we can do that. We're just gonna put some curly brackets. And in my several years of coding, I still don't know what these are actually called. So if you know, let me know. Um, and then we're gonna give it a variable name. So I'm gonna call it name. And I'll do the same for goodbye. I'll just call it name again. And then back in our controller, we can pass the variable dollar name and dollar name. So hello, and then you pass the variable name, and then you can use this like any other variable that you might pass into a function in PHP. So hello, and then dot, and then dollar name. And this dot just concatenates it if you're new to PHP. And then again, dot dollar name, and add a spacer. And then what would happen is here, is we would say goodbye. That gives us an error because we haven't put a name in. So I'm gonna call it Neil, and then we get goodbye Neil. And then same for if we go hello. It's passed that variable in from here, and it's put it in here. We could of course have more than one variable. So we could go name forward slash uh, location, and the same here as well, so location. And then we could pass that second variable in right here as dollar $location and dollar $location. Then from here, we just go dollar dot, and then maybe go from dot dollar location. I won't bother doing it for goodbye as well because we get the idea. Then we go slash England. Then we get hello, Neil from England. And that's a brief introduction to how we would pass a variable through a controller. So how about we wanna make this a bit more fancy and we wanna return this text inside of a view instead. So here's how we might do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this. So we're gonna store a variable called text and we'll set it equal to this. And to keep this simple, I'm gonna get rid of the goodbye function because we're just gonna do this on one. And I will of course remove this over here as well. So we're just working with the hello function. And once we've generated this text, we're gonna return the view. And we're gonna return that welcome view that's already been made for us. So in its current form, when we hit that forward slash hello page, it's just gonna show us the default welcome page. And when I refresh, we're just gonna get this Laravel page because we haven't done any modifying towards it. But here's where the power of blade templating comes in. I'm gonna modify it so that this Laravel part actually shows the person's name. So that's really easy to do actually. What we can do is we can pass variables into this view. So right now we're just sending them the welcome view and no variables with it. But what we can do is we can send an array of variables. So uh, just put some square brackets in here and then the name of the variable that's gonna be in the view. Um, so I'm gonna call it text and then set this equal to using an arrow dollar uh, text. So this is what the variable would be called within the uh, template file. And then this is what the variable will be called inside of the controller. So we're taking this and we're putting it in here and that's what it'd be called within the template. I hope that makes sense. So then when we pull up the template, uh, what we can actually do is you see here, we've got these curly brackets and then we put a bit of PHP in it. And this is actually really useful. So we're gonna do this right here where it says Laravel, remove that, put some curly brackets, two curly brackets uh, and some closing ones. And the idea here is that anything that is inside of these brackets has to be PHP and it'll be echoed out by default. So we don't write echo in here because that will error. We just write what it is we wanna echo. So dollar text because that dollar text variable has been passed in uh, from the greeting controller. So right here, we're passing in that dollar text variable 
and we can pick that up over here in the welcome page. So when we go ahead and refresh, uh, we get a pass error, which is always helpful. Um, and let's see why. And the reason being is that I didn't close off this bracket here. So this one matches up with this one right here. Simple syntax error, just hit refresh. And then we get that string, hello, Neil from England, all in big letters, because we pass that into the blade template. Another way that blade templates are super useful is because we can use master pages. So I'm gonna clear out this welcome file, and then we're gonna create another file in here called master.blade.php. And inside of here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go header, and then I'm gonna put a break, and then I'm gonna go footer. So imagine this is like your HTML file, you've got all your header stuff up here, all of your footer stuff down here, and we wanna have the same header and footer on every single page in our site. So what we can do is we can go into our welcome page and we can say at extends and we can go master. And this does exactly what you might expect. It picks up everything that's inside of this master page and then puts it in the welcome page. And then if we add a hundred pages, so if we had a welcome page, a goodbye page, a my account page, it would pick all these up. We'd use this one line at extends master and that would pick up the header and the footer from the master page and it will dump them in here. So let's go and test that out. If we hit the welcome page again, you see we get header and we get footer. And then if we were to put, this is the page content, what you'll see is that the content goes right up here. And ideally we want that to go between the header and the footer. So the way we can do this is by putting in the master at yield and then give it a name. So let's give it content. And what this will do is it will look for a content area called content. And inside of here we can go at section content and then we can go at end section. And what happens here is it puts everything within these section tags into this at yield content. So it just replaces this line here with whatever is here. So we refresh and we can see header, this is the page content and footer. So if we had multiple files, if we had like another file here called myaccount.blade.php, we could just include this master and then we could put all the my account content in here. And then that would filter all of that content into the master page and it would show up properly. If this doesn't all make sense, again, as I keep stressing, these examples will keep popping up. Uh, so if you missed it this time, if you didn't quite understand that explanation of it, I'm gonna keep repeating these things throughout the course. So don't give up if that didn't make any sense at all. Anyways, I'm gonna leave this one here. In that video, we covered controllers, views, and routing. We will be doing a little bit more on controllers and a bit more on views. There's tons of stuff for blade templates, which is really useful. You'll see more of it as examples in the rest of this course. So anyways, I'm gonna leave this video here um, and go and check out the next video.